most consumers don't know what a public adjuster is. I'll, I'll tell you. Um, the Department of Insurance, the Florida Department of Insurance, designates a special license called the 320, which is uh, a public adjuster designation. What that is, it means that um, we are licensed to advocate for the public, which means we can only work for the public. We cannot work for insurance companies. So the same job an adjuster would do uh, for an insurance company to protect their financial interest on a claim, we would do the same for the public, for the consumer, for the policyholder. And obviously, for you know, uh, to avoid any type of uh, uh, conflict issues, we are not allowed to work for insurance companies. And on the same uh, token, uh, the insurance company adjusters are not allowed to represent the public against the insurance company. So what, what, what a CPA does for us in dealing with the IRS, you do that for us in dealing with insurance companies. Very similar, yeah. I like, I like the comparison, but yes, very similar. No, but I, I we, you know, I, I, thank God, have never had to file a claim, you know, of devastation like so many of our neighbors have during this recent tragedy and, and those that befell us before. But, you know, you always see the guy on television that the adjuster shows up. Well, who's he? Well, the adjuster is a person that the insurance company uh, designates to look out for their financial interest on this claim. So um, their job is to be professional, to be ethical, and to make sure they do a good job. And most of them do, and most of them are honest. The only problem is they don't make the decisions. The people who make the decisions are the ones that actually run the numbers for profit and loss statements and whatnot for the insurance companies. And they look at it as a business decision, whether or not, you know, the claim should be paid uh, to its value, or maybe there's room to negotiate. And that's, that's what they try to do. Um, when you hire a public adjuster, the public adjuster knows what you're entitled to under the policy. Um, a person, an average consumer, does not know the cost of, of the repair or the replacement thereof or what he's really entitled to, such as, moving out of his house and staying in a hotel while the construction is going on. Oh, God, that'd be a blessing, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's actually your right under the policy. Most policies offer, um, you know, an um, additional living expense so you can go and live and maintain your standard uh, form of living. If you, if you're, if you are uh, accustomed to a five-bedroom home fully furnished to accommodate your pets, guess what? The policy if it includes that endorsement, you're entitled to it. Well, Joe Zavaloni, I will tell you that you were getting high eyebrows all through the studio because nobody knew that. <laughs> well, um, there's many things. This is just a small example, Cindy. Uh, unfortunately, most consumers, when was the last time you read your policy, Cindy? When you purchased the policy, I have, did you I've, actually sit down and read it? I will tell you that I have never read my policy, and I, I do assume that my husband has read it. But I, you know, now that you think about it, I, I doubt he's ever read it either. You know, well, it, the last time we ever talked to... insurance, as we talked about, was, um, you know, was when all this, the insurance companies were moving out of Florida, and and right. there was, you know, all that trouble with the administration several years ago. That that's the only time that I ever hear anyone talking about insurance is when there's a problem. Right. Insurance is only good when there's a problem. And when there's a problem, sometimes it's too late because your policy may not cover you for what you really need to be covered for. And typically, we trust our agents. And most agents are, you know, wonderful. They do a great job. They service your policy. They, most of them are friends. They're people in the community. The problem is they really work and get paid from the carriers, from the insurers. So um, many times... Um, certain endorsements that you can buy that could be beneficial to you may not be offered by the agent up front. And that could cause a huge problem whenever you need to use your policy. See, let me ask a question. Uh, most people in our state spend an average of three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 to insure their homes, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you do that, uh, let's say you go and buy an appliance for $4,000. Wouldn't you do your due diligence and you would <laughs> research to see which one is best and find out what type of warranties you get with it, et cetera, et cetera. That's exactly that. right. Right. On, in insurance, unfortunately, most people don't do that. They just trust, you know, that the agent sold them a good policy, and they hope that, you know, the language in there would save them in time of trouble. Well, you know, and, it's interesting because, you know, most people probably buy their, their homeowner's insurance policy at the same time that they're purchasing a new house and financing you know, through the bank, and, I, and that comes out of escrow, you probably never even think about your homeowner's policy again. 
unless sure. you have to and use how it. About, how about business policies that pay hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars a year in premiums? Those business owners don't necessarily look at the policy either. I have many clients that are attorneys, Cindy, that have no clue when it comes to insurance policies. They don't know what they're entitled to, and they're attorneys. Well, I'm going to go home and read my policy. I'm still not sure that I would know what it said. But, right. <laughs> or even where it is. Maybe it's at my husband's company. Well, you know, we, we all heard the, the horror stories of the last big hurricane and, you know, and how slow the insurance companies were in paying people, you know, especially those along the coastline. Why is it that insurance companies take so long to pay or don't pay? Well, um, there are state regulations in place to force them to pay timely on a claim. And when you are represented by either an attorney or a public adjuster that really know what they're doing, um, they can kind of force the insurance company and put them on a spot to actually pay something called an undisputed amount right away. Undisputed amount means the carrier thinks the loss is worth $10,000. We think the loss is worth $50,000. They cannot strong arm you to agree to the ten thousand by law. They can't do that. Now I'm not an attorney and it's important you know that. But being in the business of public adjusting, you speak to attorneys all the time. And you follow case laws and whatnot. And insurance companies cannot and it's it's under the ethical rules of adjusters and uh there's actually state statutes in place not to have the insurance company um to give them the ability to strong arm you into agreeing to a certain settlement, such as a car accident. A car accident would be uh, like a third-party liability claim where another party has to pay your claim. Therefore, you don't really have a contract with them. So if they give you an offer and you have to sign some kind of a release, then in exchange of payment, you typically give a release. In a first-party claim, which is the claim you're presenting, you don't have to fall under those type of guidelines. So what you actually do is you receive the money from the insurance carrier for what they think the loss is worth and continue to adjust the claim and continue to try to obtain what is rightfully yours and what you're entitled to under the policy. Well, that's very interesting. Zevaloni and Associates, why did you go into this? Zevaloni, you're called Zevaloni and Associates Public Adjusters, and you've been in this business since 2005. Did, right. did some disaster spur you? Yourself, or was, was, was this an anger company that, that you decided to get smart and figure out what was happening, or what, what drew you to this business? Actually, I, uh, since uh, 2001, I was, uh, I was in the business of uh, drying, dehumidification, mold, remediation, and construction through 2005. And I found myself in a position where I see my clients, my customers, um, cannot continue the construction work in their home because um, they were kind of um, stuck the company, the insurance company, does not want to pay what they're, what is rightfully theirs. And I was not in the position to argue or represent them because I was not a public adjuster. I was not licensed to do this. I could just, you know, I had to just sit and wait until, you know, the either attorneys figure it out or the consumer just decides to give up and then know what is allocated to the job and then continue the job. So this business arose kind of like out of frustration where, I've had it. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get licensed and just try to advocate for these consumers and uh, build the company based on that. And that's that's the passion that carried us through Hurricane Wilma, the, uh, Hurricane Katrina, Wilma, and uh, for the